everyone welcome back to ghostwood the twin peaks podcast i'm your no longer nasally challenged charles skaggs and with me here to talk some twin peaks is of course sans sprouse hi everybody hey charles how you feeling after your nasal surgery i can breathe again i can breathe again nice yes so can... oxygen is my friend what is that? What is that Robert Plant song? That one from like 1985. I can breathe again. What is oh, that? Oh yeah, yeah, that one. What yes. is that song called? <laughs> little by little. Little by little. Yes, that's it. <laughs> yeah. I can breathe again. I can breathe again. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, we're here at episode 39 as we get a little closer to episode 50. Oh. Creeping up. You put up with my nonsense for almost fifty episodes, so that's impressive. Trust me I on this. See that is the other way around. <laughs> no, 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 it's not. So, uh, so what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about Cooper's Dreams, which not quite sure how that title really fits in this episode because Cooper doesn't really dream in this episode, and he's already had that one dream sequence, and so I don't know where this dreams plural comes from. Um, well, he does prevent a dream coming true at the very end of the episode. So we'll give him that ooh, much. This is true. This is true. <gasps> we'll, we'll talk about that here. <laughs> She's 18 years old, Diane. Hey, now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we'll talk about that. So, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about the, this is the, this is episode five, colon, the sixth episode. Yes. For episode five, the sixth episode. And uh, which aired on May 10th, 1990, written by Mark Frost. So right oh, already, there's an upgrade in this episode. Mm, so you know it's going to be good times. Yep, great dialogue in this one, actually. Directed by Leslie Linka Glatter, who's Ooh. directed a few episodes of this, and uh, we get the introduction of Don Amendolia as Emery Battis, the very skeevy em- Emery Battis. Emery Battis, who loves vacuum cleaners, we find out later on. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> Which is- which is honestly anything everybody remembers about Emery Battis is his love of vacuum cleaners. Yep. <laughs> do you imagine Parvo's... if he like? Do you imagine if he like was around when the Dyson vacuums came out? He must have been like, "This is the best day ever." Can you imagine him watching one of those Dyson commercials? <laughs> Never lose the suction. <laughs> <laughs> the Dyson ball. Uh, oh God. <laughs> anyway, he'll, he'll end up looking like uh, Randy Marsh uh, once he finally gets some internet back. <laughs> <laughs> if you know that image that I'm talking about <laughs> so yeah seriously I wonder what yeah. he, I wonder what ever Dennis would think of this fabulous era <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we needed to find out. We never did get an update about what happened to old Emery Battis. No, well, he, he died, didn't he? He died, didn't he? Didn't he die? I think so. I think so. That yeah. sounds. He, he, this is this is you know spoiler alert. He's kind yeah. of consequential once he delivers his one. I know. I know. One but, 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 of his be, be, so He's the he's the gateway character to get Audrey to um, One Eye Jacks. So yeah. He's the, uh, he's the doorway to the perfume counter, ladies. Yep. So if you want to sell perfume and you want to be a whore, you right. go see Demery Battis. He's your guy. He's the guy you need to go talk to. He's the man. The man who can hook you up with a whorehouse. <laughs> the so, man yeah. with the Midas touch. <laughs> and the vacuum fetish. He wants you to be whores. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, this is, see, this is what happens when oxygen hits my brain. Um, so we guess, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> See what you've been missing? Um, guest starring David Patrick Kelly is Jerry Horn. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Uh, Don Davis is Major Garland Briggs. Charlotte Stewart is Betty Briggs. And the re- long-awaited return of Catherine E. Colson as the Log Lady. Always a pleasure to see Miss Catherine. Yep. 
So speaking of David Patrick Kelly, shut your eyes and you'll burst into flames. <laughs> speaking of David Patrick Kelly, did I tell you I finally watched um, Warriors all the way through? I'd never seen it all the way through until like a couple, really? couple of weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd actually never watched that movie until like two years ago mm-hmm. when it was on cable. So, so what did you what did you think? I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. It was really good. It was really good. Oh yes, come out and play. Thank you very much, David Patrick Kelly, mm-hmm. who who is not a nice person in that movie either. I didn't nope. realize. Uh, he's see- like that. He's he's like that in the Crow too. In case you didn't notice, so is he in the Crow? Yes, he is. Good he's way. like he's the. There ain't no coming back. That guy. He's that guy. Okay. He's that guy. Okay. Yeah. I have not seen the Crow since the Crow was in movie theaters. So really, yeah, it's been I a- love that. I love that movie. I have a little bit of a the, ri- the, the original movie, the one with Brandon Lee. Everything oh, else, forget it. I, but I, I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there that I yeah, like yeah. have no concept of any other crow at all except right. for that. Yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, I just I I just really dig that movie. I just I mean I love the soundtrack. It's got one of the greatest soundtracks. And you know you got the Cure, you got Nine Inch Nails. I have the got, soundtrack. Yeah, for sure, I have the soundtrack. Yeah. But it, my life with a thrill kill cult. For a while, it had a little bit of a, of a bad association for me, but right. once I got over that, it just there were other things to watch. You know, well, I understand that. Yeah, but, so and but, it is very '90s. So, but yeah, I just haven't. It's, seen it's, it's, I, I always like I like watching around Halloween time because it's set around Halloween. <laughs> so, I'll, who gets I'll, married I'll, on Halloween? Halloween. Apparently, exactly. nobody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's harsh but yeah yeah i had actually, i had a i had a friend who got married on halloween and i asked him that question and he just laughed and he's not married to her anymore yeah. so i felt bad for quoting that <laughs> he's much better off let me tell you right all right so uh so everybody get your episodes queued up we are at around the one minute 31 second mark where we have a black screen just after it says created by Mark Frost and David Lynch. So get the, all that nice and situated. And uh, when you're ready, I will count us down and we'll all magically press the play button together. All right. All right. So we'll count us down. Three, two, two one, one, play. All right. Oh, my goodness. We have new guests at the yes. Great Northern. <laughs> yep. The planet is Arrakis, also known as Dune. Desert oh. planet. Never one drop of rain on Arrakis. Yeah, so what yeah, we... Those, those singing Norwegian... Or, no, Icelanders. I'm sorry, it's Icelanders now. Oh, you're right! The Norwegians left! I forgot about that. Yes, the yes. Nor- Norwegians left. These are the Icelanders. These are the backup yes. plan. Yes. I'm sorry, I forgot all about. I'm, I I apologize to the Nordic community in general for forgetting the timeline of who we've got here. You might have just declared war. You know, like Norway is going to attack us now because you they confused better, them with Iceland. They, I didn't confuse the countries. I confused the timeline of the show. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot that it was the Norwegians that were leaving, and then the Icelandic. Businessmen or women who come after that. I got, I got them, I got this, the, them flip flopped. At least I knew it was Norway and Iceland. <laughs> At least I didn't. I'm not one of those people. I, I really, that... lo- I really love what McLaughlin's doing here. He's just, you could, you could tell what such a control freak Cooper is here. Yeah, and I just, I just love him. You know, holding up the, uh, holding up the tape recorder so Diane can hear the, uh, situ- the situation. That coffee mug, by the way, was sent to him by a fan. Really? Yeah, I read that. I did not. In, I don't. I don't even remember what art, what magazine this was, but it was some like Red Book. I think it was Red Book, like a million years ago. And I just, I basically read it and then cut the picture of him out and put it on my notebook in high school. So he was getting and, fan uh, stuff at, with the sixth episode. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, he was. So at least oh, that's what I remember from the Red Book article from 1990 and change. Here's Audrey the Stalker. Well, she's Audrey the Stalker and Audrey the Amateur Gumshoe. Amateur gumshoe. Right. So, yeah, she's... Uh, Co- Cooper's not really feeling the companionship today. Oh, and he doesn't even have time for breakfast. And Maybe she can nope. quit him. Yep. Oh. You're supposed to go to school, Audrey. She's like, yeah, but like, look at me, I'm hot. Yeah. 
And you should exactly you should watch it anyway. I want to see those pictures, Cooper. How old are you? Eighteen? Are you sure about that? Yeah. yeah <laughs> How old are you? Eighteen. We'll see you later, Audrey. Yeah. Right. right. You're not wired, are you? We're all gonna see her later, Agent Cooper. God, can you imagine being eighteen and having somebody that beautiful just basically living in your house with you? Just some tall, dark no. stranger. Oh, Jerry. Good God. So tacky. Here's, tacky. here's Ben working on his lung cancer. <laughs> Jerry and wingtips and a leather duster. And yep. there's got there's probably a bowl of tie in there somewhere. But what are they on? Nitrous oxide? Oh, oh, throw back to somebody else we yep. might know. We know anybody yep. else who's on nitrous oxide? Frank Booth, perhaps. Oh, her name is Heather. I know guys like this at work who, you know, like we try to drum up business with other clients, uh, and they, you know, like they uh, take representatives from the city and whatnot out for dinner and whatnot, and you 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 see all this stuff, all this kind of like schmoozing just to, and all this partying just to to get work with uh, I think, certain clients. I think that's it's so funny. Crazy. It's like yeah, you know, sh- yeah. show me a good time and get me laid, and I will do yep. the contract. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I don't know about where you were, but it doesn't seem quite ethical, does it? It doesn't seem quite ethical, but I, I've known other people that have had to deal with that too, where when they're on these drunken binges, they'll promise that the company can do things that the company doesn't actually do. So. Oh, Leland is ready for work again. Yep. yep. But he's still in his. You know. Oh, Leland. Yeah. So, yeah. Why are you here? Well, I feel like. I feel bad about Leland because they 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 have this sense of seeming like they're sympathetic about it, but they're they're so they're still kind of cold about him too. That he can't. You, they, you notice they waste zero time kicking him to the curb. Yeah, yeah. They were they were so willing to get rid of him because you know, like uh, they couldn't just like. Say, well, you know, hey, Leland's, you know, like he's having some problems and, you know, we'll we'll just kind of like maybe send him off somewhere. But no, they just they just wanted him out of the way to uh, so they could work on, you know, getting their sweet deal. So. Yeah, he just it just seems so. Oh, oh, there's that clown again. Good Good Lord. I know. Cooper's just like ooh, donuts. Yeah. Oh, speaking of which. Yep. Somebody came. You brought donuts. Somebody came prepared for her twin peaks oh. trading tonight. Oh, you're killing me. So let me tell you something about Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, they yeah. have an app where you can go in the app, order your donuts, put in your name, and then pay with Apple Pay, and then just drive up to the drive-through and say, "Hi, where are my donuts?" And they just give them to you. Nice. I love living in the future. <laughs> Can you imagine Cooper right now? Just like, oh, if he had the donut app. Oh, my God. Donut, donut delivery app. I have this feeling that Cooper would be one of those people that talks about phones as being yeah. those newfangled gadgets. Yep. Uh, donuts and coffee. Oh, yeah. Co- coffee. 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 And now we're, here's where things get really gross. What chakra nose blood type? <laughs> you know, we have like a stool in the corner, Cooper. Yeah, but they can't, uh, yeah, but they can't uh, you know, they don't want to contaminate anything. Mine's AB positive. Where was this Flesh World magazine? Was it in the lamp or something it was, like that? It was stuck to the ceiling is what it was. Ew. Ew, yes. Ew, gross, gross, and, gross. And why, here, here's, here's even grosser. Why is Cooper touching that magazine with his bare fingers? Oh, Gross. Yeah. Cooper, you need to take a bath and bleach now. Oh goodness gracious! You know what's weird though? Yeah. Doesn't Cooper know about Flesh World yet? Or does he not know about that? Maybe maybe it's a local maybe it's a local publication. Yeah, but wasn't Teresa Banks in Flesh World? Yeah, I guess so. That's, yeah, that's I don't know. Yeah, you're right because if he if he was involved with the Teresa Banks investigation she he should know that see that's what i'm thinking i'm wondering if maybe like, well 
Well, we remember that Chet was in, taking care of Teresa, so maybe he just hadn't wasn't up to speed on that detail. I'm wondering that myself. That maybe, maybe for whatever reason it was omitted. Maybe it didn't find its from way his, into from his case into file. Chet Desmond's report yeah. or something. That's that's possible because remember Chet disappeared. That's right. Let's rock. Yes. So let's rock. Oh boy. I still, you know, yeah, dropping out of the eleventh grade to marry Leo Johnson. Wow. <laughs> This is a small town with nothing to what do you, with that. What would you do if you came in right now? Well, probably like pee my pants and cry like a little girl, but probably. Yeah. Then I'd pull this gun out and shoot him. Oh, hey, Leo, make yeah. us some breakfast. Yep. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are. But, uh, by about 10 yeah, seconds. Exactly. <laughs> how do you not like Shelly's cooking? She works at the diner. That's probably how she knows how to cook. Yeah. Is the diner. Right. She, he's, she's all like, you know, Leo hates my cooking. And it's like, well, Shelly, like, Leo hates your breathing. Leo is an unpleasant human being. He just doesn't like you. That's kind of a way. Yeah. Kind of a way. yeah. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <gasps> Jesus, the cops. See, yeah, that's the thing. I mean, they talk big, but, like, if they saw Leo, they'd probably both. Right. Crying. Exactly. Crying. Yeah. Again, he's redoing this house. Why is he not stripping that wallpaper? Right. Well, at least Shelley has at least enough fortitude to shoot him eventually later in the episode. That's true. That's very true. That's very true. Now, I'm, I'm not convinced Bobby would even be able to do that at this point. Now I'm seeing, you know, since I've seen these episodes so many times, I'm, I'm looking at more background stuff, and nobody knows how to decorate in this damn town. <laughs> Well, it was the 90s. I mean, it's even for the 90s, this is kind of bad. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even for like the late 80s, yeah. out in the middle of the woods, it's kind of bad. Yeah. Like, what is that? Like, kitties and butterflies on the kitchen window next to the phone? I'm still wondering why Harry Goes can't pronounce Renault like everybody else. I have no idea. <laughs> Jacques Renault. Jacques Renault. Jacques Renault. I mean, maybe that's just... It's like, it's Renault. Maybe that's just, you know, his his ignorance. Yeah. Being adorable, I suppose. He's just so gosh darn adorbs. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He ain't got a phone in his truck. Yeah, just tell him that Andy showed up. And then maybe he won't ever come home again. You know how you paranoid, how paranoid you get? When are you coming home, baby? Yeah, everything's fine. Everything's good. Oh, hey, here's a gun in my hand. He's going to kill you with this really... You know how Bobby kind of manipulates the situation? Like, he puts it in her hand. It's like, okay, you do this. I'm not going to do this. You do this. I think he reminds her how much how much she wants to do this. Come on down to Big Ed's Gas Farm. We've got trucks, trucks, more trucks, old jalopies, trucks, and a motorcycle. And a motorcycle. <laughs> And the cheapest leaded gasoline in this side of the Rocky Mountains. Right. This is cheap for even back in the nineties. See, at least I think it's like sixteen sixteen cents a gallon. Seriously. I mean at least Ed and Norma have their own businesses so they can see each other at their places of work. Right. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yep. Hank's back in town. He's about to get a little awkward between. Yep. And so he's going to be back. Ayla, Ayla, Hank is back. My felon's back. back. <laughs> My felon's back. I don't, I, don't I don't know why you don't... I don't know why you believe a word he says, Norma. She's sitting here telling it, oh, he seems so hopeful. Yeah, okay. Right. Um, He's still Hank Jennings. That's the thing. So we've got... So Hank is coming back out of parole, and Nadine's crazy. So we're going to have to put our little relationship on hold for, I don't know, 27 years? Yeah, exactly. It's like, and to think, they only did this for like another 25 years, back and forth. We never want to hurt or hurt anyone except each other. That's yep. the thing. They're too nice of people. You know, there's, there's really, yeah. you know. Well, that's basically, well, that and also they... Neither one is a, like has enough 
self-confidence enough to make the move. No, of course not. Yeah, another one is another one is going to be good. They don't want. They don't want to. At least Ed's trying not to hurt somebody. I don't. I'm not quite sure what Norma's reason is. I think Norma's just trying to do the right thing, and I don't think she wants to hurt Nadine either. I mean, Nadine is right. Right. Definitely a uh, her own issue. She definitely has her. Oh, was I supposed to say I love you too? Yeah. Anytime somebody says I love you, you're supposed to say it back. Oh. Oh, that's so creepy. Gross. Yeah, I have to say you were a little girl, but is that an Aston Martin on his desk? Yes, it is. It's it's James Bond's Aston nice. Martin. Nice. DB DB five. Nice. Good taste in toys. Good taste in toys. Yeah. Oh yeah, he looks like he has little toys all over his office. It's it's the Goldfinger Aston Martin. Nice. Yeah, he's got a. Couple of cars in the, on the back shelves too. Yep. Can I speak frankly? I want to work in the perfume counter, and you're going to do what I want because my daddy's your boss. In case you couldn't tell, like wood paneling is really big in Twin Peaks. Well, when you are in a logging community, I think the wood motif right. is very, very popular. Right, which makes sense. Yeah, yes. So, oh, let's do a little pouty thing. Mm. I'd have to talk to your dad before I put you in the, you know. The, yep. the, the horror training camp that we call the perfume counter. Audrey tries the sweet, and then she flips on like you know Audrey Horn, aspiring dominatrix here. Yeah, kids, don't ever do this. Rape is not a laughing matter, and it's nothing to be trifled with. Nope. Yep. It ruins lives. Mm-hmm. I wonder who that picture is on his uh, on, his on his shelf up there. Yeah, and this guy pops up in things every now and again to this actor, and I just, right. I don't even know his name, I just call him Emery Battis. He's, yeah, he's one of those. Yeah, it's Don Yeah. Yeah, he's one of those people that I know, that I, I call him by the character, character name. Actor. Yeah, yeah. That, I, that sticks out the most for me. Right. Donna, in probably the most <laughs> realistic kid outfit in this entire series. Right. Pretty much. Hanging out the gazebo. That swing in place, the gazebo. So, so he didn't die. He be, he became a showgirl in Vegas. <laughs> Aww. Aww. my mom, she's a drunk. Mom, she's a drunk. Yeah, poor James. Yeah, poor James. I mean, James does have. James does have kind of an, kind of. An she's issue. an alcoholic because you know most writers are alcoholics. Trust me on this. Well, and the thing is. Anybody who has a problem with somebody's parents, I always thought that was ridiculous. Like, oh, huh, your 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 dad is such and such. It's like, yeah, like if there's anything I can do about that, you know, there's, I really can't control them. <laughs> I can't control it. Do you realize that James is totally slut shaming his mom right now? Well... I will say that, you know, if you've been doing this for a while and you've got a kid at home, you probably shouldn't spend, like, days at a time away from your child. I don't, even if that's to go to, like, you know, church camp. (laughs) (laughs) You probably shouldn't leave your kid alone, you know what I mean? Eh, Probably not. So they come from two different worlds, but they still love each other. Yes. All those gigantic 90s headbands, those were so great. Everything in the nineties was gigantic. gigantic. James, James has a really bad spiky haircut here. I think he's one of those guys that just is going to have that hair no matter what happens. Yeah. So it's like it's like he gave it him to himself. He probably did. It's not even at all. It's like well, I was trying to save a couple bucks. Chop, chop, chop. Oh heck yes, Jonah! Ooh, a policeman's dream. Heck yeah. So, I want that plate so bad. So where did that <laughs> see they give you the donuts to test your guilt to see if you're guilty. And if you <laughs> if you don't eat them, you're guilty. I ate the whole plate. I ate the whole plate. Um Yeah, that's not the last time we're gonna be seeing red drapes here. I don't know where that plate came from. Is that like just one of Jacques' plates that they took out of the cupboard? Like, ah, oh, screw this guy. We're gonna put I hope plate. they I hope they brought their own plate. And if they didn't, I hope they don't wash it. I hope they just leave that there for him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, screw you, Jacques. You don't have to clean up your own plates. 
And here's another dirty one. Nick. Cooper gets, you know, I understand that, that that's Cooper. At least this time he's wearing gloves. Yeah, he is. He? It's like, you also want to say, he, when you. It's Laura. I recognize the birthmark. When you want to, when I know you're excited about finding a clue, but maybe don't make that face when you're looking at the Yeah. Just, yeah, maybe want to dial that back a little. The red drapes from Mud Dreams? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that cabin might just be a little bit important. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah, 50 gallons of heating oil for this apartment. Or to burn down the Or to burn down the sauce. It's like, hey. Yep. We're going to take a walk in the woods, and then I'm going to urinate, because that's what I do. And it's that. It's urinate. You're always very, very formal about it. You know, exactly. everything, Not, in, doesn't just everything in the 90s was big. Everybody's clothes were baggier than they needed to be, and the sleeves were big. And Right. Uh, so here we have Maddie meeting uh-huh. Donna for the first time. It's like, hi, Donna. Do you think I look like yes. Laura? Everybody else does. Well, I like how that they have that the characters are really staring at her, because that would yeah. be really hard to take your eyes off of her. She looked right. exactly Well, with, with James, I think it's just because he's actually attracted to her. Wait, James never gets me a cherry Coke. James never has a second cup of coffee at home. Exactly. Um, but it's... It, I don't know if he's attracted to her or if he... It, it, it really is that sort of... Or just or just like can't help but look. Is it, or, yeah, that, is that I... You, I, think, I think he's attracted to her because remember, doesn't he like... He kiss her? Yeah, but he kind of kisses everybody. You know, I don't. I don't think That's he true, like kiss but... kisses her, but James has always been cool. James has always been cool, and yes, Donna, the person who killed her will never be caught. That is very true. Right. So. Oh no, no, wait! It wasn't that he kissed her. It's just because remember they were singing "Just You and I," and then he like kept looking at her and staring at her longingly. Seriously. And Donna picked. And Donna picked up on it, and then they had a fight. You've seen a ghost. Well, it's hard, you know? I mean, it's not like he stopped right. loving yeah. Laura. You know, Laura died, right. and he had to realize that he had conflicted feelings, but... It's not my fault. She looks like my dead ex-girlfriend, okay? Come on, honey. Come on, honey. Give me a freaking bone here. I think it would be sort of like... like um, the dead. You didn't even drink the cherry Coke he got you. Yeah, real nice. And wait, what a waste good, of five. Yeah. Right. Completely untouched. Not cool, Maddie. Not cool. Is he at least had a couple sips, uh, token sips. And here's Hank lurking. So, that's what he oh, does. and here we have the Dave Beauty Buffon hairdos. Yep. Yep. Hairstyles by the Marge Simpson. Oh, hairstyles from 1965. Right. Oh. Yeah. Hello, Hank. Don't touch me, please. <laughs> yeah. How'd you get a ride in? Oh, I hitched a ride on the back of one of those logging trucks. Norma, what is up with your hair? That Leo's so impulsive. God, <laughs> stop looking at her. So gross. So do we know how long Hank's been in jail? Uh, I can't remember. Earn your way back into her heart. You were never in her heart to begin with. She's- they probably They probably talked about it during the parole hearing. Yeah, it... Were you ever even her, in her heart yeah, to begin yeah. with, Hank? Yeah. Seriously. It's just... Well, technically, they're still married, so, yeah. Yeah, but she never, I think... Because Nor- Nor- Norma never pulled the trigger on that, so... Yeah. They're still married. But, yeah. uh, oh, inv- poor Chet. Invitation to love. Invitation to, like, knock Chet. To the ground. Chet is down. Chet is down. I thought there was going to be so much more to this soap opera because they kept showing so much of it. Oh, there should be somebody. Somebody should be doing like fan films of Invitation. Those, to love. those are so great. Those stupid panther sculptures. <laughs> My parents have one of those somewhere, and I, I love it. All oh, family therapy goes really well when your dad family... is in the military and your therapist is Doctor Jacoby. Right. Constantly using drugs. Bobby can't even be awake for this process. Yeah. 
I like how Bobby's just he he pretends to yawn and he's like, "I'm so bored with this, you guys. I can't even." Have you ever killed anybody? Well, yes, I have, Doctor Jacoby. I'm Bobby, and I killed a guy. Bobby killed, Bobby killed a, guy. a guy. Yeah. What is on your tie, Doctor Jacoby? Classic. Now I gotta looks, say, looks like lo- looks like the little man from another place. I gotta say, I do love this furniture. <laughs> oh, Bobby, yes. Bobby sleepy. Yeah. It kind of looks like Gilligan, but in the woods. <laughs> I can't quite tell. Zip. Zip. <laughs> Doctor Jacoby looks like the kind of guy who doesn't know how to dress. You know, Doctor Jacoby dresses right. like Dougie Jones dresses. Yes, he does. Like, they probably have the same fashion concern. Like somebody who doesn't know how to dress himself. <laughs> that is so... F- I just... Oh, my God. <laughs> Ew. Yeah, I think you... I think you want to know the details of this situation a little more than you do from a... Uh, from a right. doctor standpoint, which is really gross. Which is really gross. Did you cry, Bobby? Like a little... Girl? <sighs> Look, I'm not telling you anything about anything that has to do with Laura in anything sexual. Because <laughs> you're going to be way too interested in it. Exactly. And you're going to be playing the tape over and over uh-huh. again on your, like, ginormous head. On your headphones. ginormous head. <laughs> so gross. <laughs> and here's Dr. Jacoby's office. Pet, pet, petting your coconut. Yeah. Dr. Jacoby's office. If Hawaii were in a basement. Right. Is what we have here. It's basement 5-0. <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> I got you started, didn't I? You got to finish it. You got to say you got to do the whole thing. It's it's it, it's so catchy. It's very catchy. Um, I think the ven- the ventures. I think this this is an interesting thing about the Bobby character is that Bobby seems like such such a hard ass but well it's all facade his hard ass was because he, here like once he because jacoby takes all of five minutes to get him breaking down crying so well i think and i think bobby too i i think he well, i think most of it is he doesn't he doesn't want to do what his father does and he doesn't want to confide in his father but he needs right. somebody to talk to this about because what happened with laura was really scary it was really dark and bobby killed a guy Yep. I mean, Jacoby actually like gets him to open up a little. Yeah. Here. Yeah. So it's This is this is probably Bobby at his most real in the original series. I think so. I think most definitely. And even even when even in the return, you know, Bobby he's right. he's more of the good cop. You know, we all know who the bad cop is, Chad. Right. So Chad. He's, he's definitely the good cop, but man, he's man of- Brings back some memories. Yes, yes, he gets very emotional, and it's and and you yep. you, you sort of had to stop and think like, oh yeah, that was her boyfriend. You know, they, they were right. they were very close. I mean, she was very close to James, but she and Bobby were very close too. You know, with their doing their drug deals together and stuff. And this is Laura Palmer's theme. <laughs> It's so sad and tragic and depressing and maudlin and bummer. It's Laura Palmer's theme. <laughs> it's Laura Palmer's theme. Now there's a crow. Meanwhile, Re- Winterfell. Attempted murder. Attempted murder. So. so. Oh, somebody's been. Hawk. Somebody's been... <laughs> <laughs> well, he proves it. He's a tracker. What's Hawk's last name? Uh, well, it's Tommy Hawk Hill. Hill. Hawk is That's his right. Name. Hill. Yeah. Yep. That's a really nice not, looking this, cabin. These, these are not the cabins you're looking yeah, for. I was going to say, that's a really nice looking cabin for to be owned by Jacques Renault. Because you know the, the Jacques Renault cabin. Maybe, maybe, it's, maybe it's a timeshare. I mean, the Jacques Renault cabin like has never had the toilet cleaned, and there's probably Cheeto dust everywhere, right. empty pizza boxes, and ladies' underwear, and right. and, and, and magazines stuck to magazines the ceiling. stuck to the ceiling with God knows what is the adhesive. Yeah. Uh. Oh, and we're approaching the cabin. <gasps> That's why it looks too nice. Freeze log. 
This is a log lady's cabin instead. That's why it's pretty. Right. I love how the log looks like a little dude with his arms sticking out. That's never yep. not adorable to me. <laughs> right. I think that's so great. Help me, I'm trapped in this okay. log costume. I can't get so out. There's four milk cans outside. So I right. think the log lady is just one more milk can away from being a hoarder house. No cake. Well, screw that. I'm out. Yeah, I'm leaving. Yeah, I'm leaving. No what kind of cookies? Sugar, not even chocolate chip. Man, you just like falling down on the job here, log lady. Sugar cookies, the lobster roll of cookies. <laughs> right. I think I told you that I consider the lobster roll to be the blandest, whitest white person food ever on the face of the planet. <laughs> no, you didn't. Like, well, let's take white bread and let's butter it. Okay, already we're crazy. <laughs> then we'll take lobster. <laughs> Mix it with a little Smack. little bit of mayonnaise, and to I, I love that she smacks Cooper's hands. Yes, exactly. And then to add it a little bit of a of a a little bit of a zing, let's season it yeah. with celery salt. Yeah. yeah, blandest food in the world. Yeah. we're all mad here," said the Cheshire Cat. Seriously, because it's a tea party. Are they going to have that on the ceiling? Ooh, nice! Look at that gigantic wheel. Is she going to make some giant wagon wheel coffee cake? For it's, it's a wagon wheel. <laughs> the stupid. Howdy, folks. Howdy, folks. Time for timer. <laughs> Roy Rogers garage sale wagon wheel coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> oh, crocheted blankets. Yeah. No home is truly a good home without Good night, one. Margaret. <laughs> Hi, I'm the log. Look at my arms. <laughs> you still got to feel bad for Margaret, though. I mean... Yeah. Well, yeah. She's obviously troubled. Remember how exciting it was to be married and have your wedding night? And Cooper finally, Cooper finally talks yeah. to the log. It's your wedding night, you're married, you're excited, you're looking forward to the yeah. rest of your life, and then your husband is killed. That's horrible. That's a right. horrible thing to happen to a person. The owls are fine, they do that. Well, Catherine Coulson is so good. In she's this. so wonderful. My question, though, is how does the log see everything? Isn't it just in the house right. with her? Well, the owl, the log is, you know, has probably senses everything in the woods because it's connected to the woods. So whatever, maybe as long as there are a tree nearby, maybe it's like uh, it can pick up on whatever that tree sees. Well, and he has that know. special traumatic, I got hit by lightning power. This is true. So. Man or girl? girl? Girl. I don't know if that's a sexist comment or if he knows that we're talking about grown men and young ladies. Right. Well, maybe he figures younger than high school. You know, like high school. High school age, yes. Or, or yeah. Girls, because we're pretty no. sure we know who we're talking about. If, we if they were, yeah. See, Cooper knows who we're talking about here. Yep. So, walking through the woods again. Cooper, Maybe you take Leo? the absolute, like, most difficult way to do that? You could have just walked around that tree. <laughs> Owls. That way. This way. This way. I hear Julie Cruz music. Attempted murder. Attempted murder. All right. One. We look down at the photo. One. Three, four. Two, three, four. Boom. Four. That should be, they should all. I actually, I love, actually, I love that I shot they should, with all four of them. Yeah, they should have a band. And that should yes. be their it's album like a, cover. It's like, it's like a Beatles, that should be a Beatles it's album cover. Totally right there. a Beatles album cover. It's great. <laughs> Those profile shots are great. I like how Andy's not here because there has to be one other cop in the entire town staying right. at the office. Okay, Doc, you stay behind because you're slowing us up, dude. Well, he's also a civilian. They can't. They can't. Uh, right. Right. We can't protect him. Right. Well, they can't. They can't take on that liability. He is a civilian. Here's hockey. <laughs> and it's hawk. It's the hawk show starring me. I'm hawk. It's the hawk show. Don't don't do that. No. Oh man, I was listening. See, to there's always music in the air. And, aw, Waldo. Waldo. Poor little guy. Yeah, you just opened it and you just exposed it, dumbass. 
hurting me. Hurting no, me. No, no. Red twine, red curtains. Oh. And poker chips. Mr. Mr. Jackpots. Yeah, seriously. That, that... Hello. Yeah, that clock's paying out. <laughs> well, I think we found the thousand mm, dollar chip. Bite the bullet, baby. With a chunk missing. Just the exact size of what was in Laura's stomach. We found this chunk. Now we have the rest of it. Again, a thousand dollars. Like a puzzle. I mean, Jacques Renault in that apartment, <laughs> right. he's going to give her a thousand dollars to chew on. Right. What I want to know is who's put the poker chips in the cuckoo clock. I think it was Jacques to hide them because nobody expects the cuckoo clock. <laughs> nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. Catherine Martel and and spouse and spouse. That's so no kiss. <laughs> Like, try not to be an alcoholic tonight, okay? Two drinks in eight seconds. <laughs> Aw. He's a cute man. He's a good looking guy. Look at that, look at that smile. Yeah, who wouldn't like that guy? Come on. I love that they're singing Home on the Range. <laughs> well, I think they're probably just doing the most American thing they can think of. Like, wouldn't you ice right, right. and want to listen to metal? You know, that's... Yeah. Do you have any metal by those guys that ate each other's heads? Well, yes, I do. <laughs> Coming right up. And here's Jerry being creepy. Oh. I think I'm <laughs> <laughs> Snuck that in on you. And Leland comes in with the worst breath of the day. And I personally think this is Bob. It's like I, Bob's trying to keep Leland as normal as possible, but of course he doesn't know how to do that. So, so I, see, I see it the different way. I see it the reverse. I see that it's Bob trying to let Leland off the hush, the leash a little bit, but just dangling him. But I think he's he's to, just the sort of like he's not letting him be completely him. He's just trying to be a semblance of him. Yeah, maybe, but I still think the um... because he does have pain, and Bob wouldn't feel pain over this. Uh, true, but I think right now, where he's like looking around and like New shoes. sort of acting like he's fixing his hair, that seems like a Bob move to me. You know, just sort of like, oh, fixing right. hair. That's what he. But he doesn't have that intent. He doesn't have that intense eye stare that Bob has. He had it for a second, but I don't know. Let's keep an eye. Let's keep an eye. Yeah. Well. No pun intended. Yeah, let's, let's keep an eye on him. This is, I like playing the game. Is it Bob or is it Leland? Yeah. Wallpaper. There's a good. There's a good. Oh my god. Yeah. Well, obviously they redecorated. You know, I I think this hotel would lose at least one star on TripAdvisor for me with this wallpaper. Sneak, sneak, sneak. What is this little hidey hole? This little hidey hole. Into the Audrey Cave. Into the Audrey Cave. I mean, I'm sure this is some sort of electrical access panel. Yeah. Don't you think? Right. That's what I think. Don't you think that Ben is. Horn knows that this shit's there? <laughs> you, know? you, would th you would think, but remember, Ben do doesn't do that stuff himself. So maybe he doesn't. I want to know, like, how long did it take her to make all these, like, secret hidden, mm -hmm. like, panels and whatnot? Yeah. yeah. Well, and also. Bitch slap. So you just want to say, she obviously doesn't know him and his business dealings very well. Because slap. she's... Three times slap. She's mad, but she's, he's going to One-Eyed Jacks, but she doesn't realize that he owns One-Eyed Jacks. Like, so she's, she's not as mixed up with him as she likes to think that he, he is. Okay, Audrey, now it's time to stop watching. This is just getting weird. Yeah, it is kind of weird that she's kind of laughing at this that her dad making out with someone that's not her mom well i can understand the whole I mean, and audrey's probably known that her parents marriage is over right. for a long long time yeah but why would you want to a, watch it you my know, you my know. absolute exact point right there so yeah i just want to take a moment here and remind everybody what 
horrible, horrible people Catherine Martell and Benjamin Horn are. Because this town is pretty much a town... Oh, Pete drinking a... <laughs> yeah, milk. He loves that he's drinking milk. That's yeah. so adorable. So, this entire yeah. town... It's uh, coming up next, Pete Martell's World Geography. Yeah. Pete, this entire town is pretty much in existence because of the sawmill. You know, you know that like 60% of these residents work at that sawmill. And if they don't right. work at that sawmill, they probably work at that department store. So, to burn down the mill ruins this town. It doesn't just give them insurance money. It ruins this town. It ruins the lives well, of a lot of they're, people. They're probably just... T- they probably do- don't... I mean, Ben obviously doesn't care about the people in the town. Catherine certainly No, doesn't. they're horrible, horrible people. Ca- well, Ca- Catherine is a sociopath. Ben is just greedy. Okay, now we have... This is legit Bob, I think. This is... this. Is, you think that's Bob? that's Bob? I think that's Leland. Yeah, go dance with him because he's crazy. Yep. Because you you know Bob would not be crying. Well, yeah, good point. But is those look like crocodile tears though? I don't. I'm not convinced. I might. I respectfully disagree. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Well, what do you guys? What do you listeners think? Is it Bob or is it Leland in this scene? Yeah, please tell us. We need to. uh, yeah, set us yeah straight. we need to know. We got to, you know, this this game of Bob or Leland is not as cut and dry as it could be. So, there, I, there's definitely two <laughs> ways you so could cute. obviously interpret the scene. Yes, I, yeah, I like how the uh, Icelandic woman is like trying to mimic, like, oh, well, hey, this is this new crazy dance craze called like peekaboo. This is the this is the the moose. The yeah, mammy. It's the moose with the with our antlers. Yeah. Oh, so it, but see, Audrey. Poor, poor Audrey. Audrey is crying. Audrey's a here. freaking human being. That's why she's crying. Because. Right. Oh, here's sh- ominous, shadowy Josie is ominous and shadowy. Ominous and shadowy Josie is ominous and shadowy. This is very true. Here's Maddie in pajamas. Oh, what are we? What are we sneaking around for, Maddie? Yeah. Old touch tone phones. Oh. What else did you find in the bedpost? Yep. And one of the bedposts screws off the, 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 the shoebox in there. <laughs> right. That's kind of crazy. I've like found all her mixtapes. <laughs> <laughs> tapes. Aw. Laura and Donna. Laura Palmer, homecoming queen. Yep. So sweet. We've shown the photo once per episode, so take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> now, who else is in Benjamin? Is Benjamin Horde in, ben with, in bed with? Criminally speaking, not literally, and criminally speaking. Well, let's 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 run this down. Okay, Catherine. Josie, uh, Hank, Leo. Who else am I missing? Uh, Catherine, Josie, Hank, Leo, and, and well, the Renault brothers work for him. Oh yeah, right, right. Jock and Renault, yeah, and Blackie. Mm-hmm, Blackie, yeah, pretty much. Yep. Oh, and then eventually, um, well, the oh, well, yeah, I guess we did count the Renault brothers as plural, so. Yeah, the whole family. Okay, was, was, there's, Jean, there's Jean, there's Jean Renault as well. So yeah, stoves for when you're too lazy to pick up your cigarette lighter. Oh, I've known so many people that have set their eyebrows on fire <laughs> or their hair on fire doing well, that. I was to say, with Shelley's big mane of hair there, that's not probably the smartest thing she could be doing. Seriously, that is, she does have quite the mane of hair. Like, <laughs> Only to be right, rivaled it's, by it's Leo's mane like, of hair. It, it probably has a little moose in it too, so it would probably go up really quickly. Oh, where are you going with those gas cans, Leo? Yep. Gonna go burn something down. Go burn something down. Oh. oh. 
How, how long has he been out of prison? Like, well, remember, if if you love somebody, set them on fire. How long has he been out of prison? Like, like seventeen hours. <laughs> I know it is like already beating the crap. Well, out of I mean, somebody. it's Leo, so I don't mind. But my God. Right. Yeah, it is. It, it's kind of hard, you know, not to root for Hank in this scene. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. It's really hard. As repulsive as Hank is. Give me a. Beer. Give me a beer. <laughs> <laughs> That's obviously where the SNL got that from. Yep. Well, here we go. Everybody run. Shelly's got a gun. Oh, nice. Now that's in my head. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Everybody run. Laura Palmer, the homecoming queen's got a gun. The 11th grade dropout has a gun. <laughs> oh. Leo hurt. This is why you don't shoot somebody. Swing. And not look at them because then they just run off. And you don't know what happened. And now we have to find out because there's a cliffhanger. So thanks, thanks a lot, Thanks a lot for that. Uh, Cooper returns to room 315. God damn it. <laughs> but his, Freaking Icelanders. His door is open and he is at the ready. Yeah. What, what peril awaits Cooper in his darkened hotel room? To be fair, this is how he normally enters a room. Yeah, this is true. Yes. Reach over and turn on the light. Oh! Reach for the sky. Oh, it's Audrey. Oh, oh. hey, naked Audrey. It's not TV, it's HBO. You know, and you know she's been sitting here, like, the last two hours, thinking about how this is going to go down, and she's realized that this is a bad idea. Are you sure you're not wired? (laughs) That this is a bad, bad idea, and that... Yeah. Are you really sure you're not wired? (laughs) And she realizes that he's going to see her and kick her out. Yeah. And you realize you're legally obligated to tell me you're not wired. Right? <laughs> are you a cop? Because you got to tell me if you are. <laughs> it's entrapment if you don't. <laughs> but yeah, you know, because you know, she started out thinking like, "Oh, I'm going to be all sexy and you know, come hither with my, you know, with my eyes and, and naked under the sheet right. and stuff like that." And then she starts thinking about it like, "But what if he doesn't want me? And what if I'm too young and he is older? And oh God, what am I doing? But I'm already naked." <laughs> so. I think she's just been torturing herself with this decision until she got right. got into the bed. Well, yeah, you have to wonder how long she's been planning this because this this isn't just someone. Hey, I'm gonna like take off all my clothes and go under this guy's bed who I'm totally crushing on. Yes, yeah. twice twice my age. Well, and you you just gotta you just gotta wonder like where is she learning this femme fatale behavior? Well, you know. Let, well, let's let's remember who her yeah. father is. Mm-hmm. And and the type of women he hangs out with. Very very true. Yes, Catherine Martell. And and remember who her uncle is. Oh, but they but his uncle, I think. You know, uh, there. Do you do you know the right. comedian Anthony Jeselnik? Uh, He's no. very very dark sense of humor. So if you if you don't like dark and if you're easily insulted, I wouldn't recommend him. But I I think he's funny, and that could be because I'm, right. Oh, that's probably right. I'm dark and not easily offended, but. Yes, it says, <laughs> exactly. It says, the first thing I look for in a woman is intelligence. Because if she doesn't have that, she's mine. <laughs> <laughs> and I feel like that's Jerry's dating. Criteria. Like, well, then, well, that, well, that's how it probably used to be. And then once he got older, it's probably just like, hey, you want to get stoned? Mm-hmm. You want to go sit in the woods and watch Dr. Amp and get stoned? Seriously. <laughs> That's probably his move now. Yeah, seriously. I think that, you know, if uh, if it didn't work out with Dr. Amp, I think that Jerry <laughs> and uh, Nadine Hurley would have uh, been right. a pretty good match, frankly. <laughs> pretty much. It was it was destined. It was in yeah. the stars. It was my density. Oh, very you. nice. <laughs> I caught that reference. All right. Very nice. All right. So anything else about this episode before we give our ratings? Oh, no, I just, like I said, it, 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 there's so many yeah. tragic things about these characters. Right. And, and Audrey just, Audrey just breaks my heart. She's so lonely that she doesn't know what to do. So she tries too hard. Right. And I think that's, okay. that, that's, that's, that's a good point. Cause yeah, she does try. She is trying way too hard. Yeah. Here. But I guess she figures, well, you know, he's not like the normal high school boys that she's used to. This is a man. Right. This is, this is, but he's an adult. Audrey. And not just that, he's, a, you know, he's a special agent because she always refers to him as her, her special, special agent. agent. Yeah. 
You look yeah. like a movie star. Yeah, so I keep getting ahead of myself with these quotes. And it's, yep. Just w- wait for it. Wait for it. It's funny too because like it's you know you you forget how well you know a show until you start watching again and you're like oh yeah this is gonna and like it it, it, it just yep. feels total second nature to watch. Well, it. there's a, yeah it just it gets you all the on these different trains of thought. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, I, lo- I you can obviously tell the difference in dialogue in this mm-hmm. episode just by Mark Frost writing it because yeah just there's a lot of great lines in this. There are a lot of great lines, and it and it really does show you how tragic everybody is. I mean, you, you, there's James right. with his tumultuous family. You know, I'm not I'm not, right. I'm not one to say that you know, oh, a broken home is terrible. No, um, yeah. you know, if, it, if parents are divorced, parents are divorced. That kind of stuff happens. We all know it. But when you have the you know the dad who just runs off and never shows up again, and then the right. mom who's it's like, well, hey, my dad ran away, and my mom's a big slut who was also an alcoholic. Yeah, she's and, she's a she's kind of a drunken sleep arounder, and but you know, if you want to sleep around and drink, that's totally fine. That's your life. That's your choice. But when you've got a kid at home, the problem. Exactly. I don't care if you're the mom or the dad. That's the problem. So well, obviously, Ed, she James had to be taken away, and Ed raised her. Okay, right okay. So let's think about all the tragic characters in this episode. So you got James. <laughs> we could be here. I know, all right? You got you. <laughs> and you got Bobby. Bobby who's yeah. putting up a front. And I think Bobby's probably sometimes I get the the impression that Bobby is the captain of the football team because his dad wanted him to be. But you know, how many captains of the football team do you know that are Mr. Long Hair Leather Jacket guys? You know, right. captains of the football team look like normally they, they normally they try to bre- beat up those pe- guys. Right, captains of the football team because like they're Mike. all they're just like me. exactly. Mike would normally be. Yeah, the they look like Mike. They don't look yeah, like Bobby. So I think there's more to Bobby than. Um, well, maybe it's just because he's more talented in football. Maybe I just think that he's trying to do the only you know you know manly man things that he can stand that his dad wants him to do because you know he doesn't want to go into right. the military. Um, right. There, there's a sensitive side to Bobby and a... Which, of course, makes it ironic when he becomes a cop. But see, that's... It, it, it's only... Because, well, it was, because with Bobby, he's like... Teenage Bobby is the anti-authority. Yeah. And there's nothing more authority than becoming a cop. And I think, I think the so irony that, is more in the change in him. But I mean, not to say right. that the military doesn't help people, but the cops are more... You know, a cop is more staying in the hometown and helping the people around you that you love. Right. A, a Bobby thing than it does a Major Briggs kind of a thing. So, so you've got that. You've got Bobby. You've got James. You've got Ed and Norma. You know, Ed's wife has gone crazy. Er, and Norma's husband is back right. from jail. And even though they pretty much hooked up with these people right. to get back at each other, you know, just to. <laughs> I mean, because Norma went out with Hank to make him jealous, and that's when that's when uh, Ed goes off with Nadine and pretty much married her he, he shoot, out of pity because, because he shot she, her eye sh- out. Right, right. And so since he married Nadine, then she's like, all right, well, fine, then I'll just marry Hank. And that's been like 20 years. And that's been like 20 years. You know, yeah. or maybe just like 10. I don't know. But it's, it feels like forever. So. Well, I gotta, I gotta imagine that shooting out someone's eye is gonna give you a good amount of guilt. It's gonna give you a good amount of guilt, and you're gonna marry a crazy woman. Right. You know, you're gonna be well loved, but she's a volatile, crazy lady. <laughs> right. So you got that. You got those two people with horrible taste in knickknacks. I might add horrible taste in knickknacks. So you got those two, and you've got you have Catherine, Catherine, and Pete, who are the so dysfunctional. Yeah, but they're not. I don't think they're tragic because Catherine knows what she's doing, and Pete. It's fine just to fish and make sandwiches with Josie. You know, I don't think they're sad about their situation necessarily. How do you think? How do you think Pete would be if Josie wasn't around? Creepy with the maids. You think? I think so. I don't. <laughs> I think that's. I think that's what Pete would be if Josie wasn't around. So, so then you have. Um, then you have Shelly. I, I can't. I can't see Pete being creepy. He's such a nice guy. I, but I think if you worked for him and he was all like, "So what are you doing?" You know, like, he's lonely. You know, yeah. he's not interested I in anything. He's not trying to get anything out of you. He's just trying to talk to you. Right. Much. Right. So, and then you have Shelley, That's who we find out in this episode has dropped out of high school to marry Leo Johnson. What? Right. 
Obviously a big, big mistake. What was her life like that she thought dropping out of high school and marrying Leo was the answer? Well, remember, she talks about that. She talked about that, you know, hot guy in a flashy mm-hmm. car. And all he wanted to make so she mistake. just, she bought into the Leo Johnson mystique. But see, that's the thing. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, she's not, when you think about, when you think about her daughter, think about Becky. Mm-hmm. Becky is addicted to heroin. Okay, that's what's making her make bad decisions. Right. Shelly doesn't seem to be a drug addict to me. Shelly's just made really, really bad decisions. So I just wonder right. what in her life led her to that. It's very, it's kind of tragic. And then, and then let's take a look at Leland. You know, Leland in general is just really, 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 really sad considering the fact that Bob has been possessing him since he was like 14. Right. Essentially, yeah, his... his... Any chance at a normal life was wiped out early on, yeah, because of Bob possessing him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it just—it's only at his death that he realized he actually gets his his soul back. Right, bit. right. It's terrible. And then, of course, and then there's Audrey, so lonely, trying so hard, so right. desperate to connect with somebody. She's desperate to connect with someone on any level, but I think she's also at that point in her life where she's having those sexual feelings and she's also seeing that sex can get you things. So it's all getting mixed up in her head. So yeah. So, so, right. so tragic. She's, she's, I see, I see Audrey as confused I do too. because of just, yeah, just that because like you said, she does have like all these different, she's been given all these different um, approaches to life and she can't quite reconcile them in her head. Right. Right. So yeah, just and, then, and obviously she ends up making bad decisions, and well, unfortunately, or yeah, she made one, and then, and then she made one, she made one reckless decision, I think, to go to go to the bank. Yes, but Eckhart was the one that blew it up. Right. She obviously. Right. Didn't she know. didn't know that was going to happen. Wasn't intentional. And that was incidental. Right. Yeah, the, she because she didn't know the bomb was inside. No, she didn't know the bomb was inside. She just thought she was going to be stuck to a to a right. vault door for a door, six days. a vault right. door. Yeah, yeah. And then when she's in a coma, Cooper rapes her. So a lot of the terrible things that have happened to Audrey are well. Let's, let's, you mean Bob rapes her? Doppelganger Cooper. Doppel Cooper. Co- doppel co- doppel yeah. Cooper. Doppelganger. Yeah, Mr. C Mr. rapes her. Mr. C rapes her, and so. Because that wasn't Cooper. No, no, yeah, let's get that let's get that straight. <laughs> right. So um so you know, it, so terrible things happen then, to her, not of her own accord. So Yeah, very sad. Yeah. yeah, there's there's very few characters that aren't tragic. It's probably quicker to re- list the ones that aren't tragic in Twin Beaks than the ones that are. Mm-hmm. And that's right, you know, it might not be quicker because it would take me a few minutes to think of who yeah. they are. <laughs> Andy and Lucy. Okay. That's yes, little... there we go. And we're Andy done and here. <laughs> yeah, then that's it. See? See how quick that was? See how that was? <laughs> <laughs> Andy and Lucy. Both very, done. very simple. Yes. Yep. Although, unless you count um, Wally Brando, that's a little bit of tragedy. But They brought that on themselves. <laughs> That's true. That's their own <laughs> fault. They pro they 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 foolishly procreated. They brought that on themselves. <laughs> Seriously. So, what did you? Uh, what's your rating for this episode, Charles? My my rating for this one: nine out of ten copies of Flesh World stuck to the ceiling because oh. you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to give this one. It, 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 let's just say it was a very lonely night for Jacques Renault oh, to have that many copies stuck to the ceiling. Uh, <laughs> I would rather watch Jacques Renault sweep the floor for 90 minutes than think about that. As Green Onion yes. plays. Booker T, save me. Booker T, Booker T save the MGs. Me. Um, I give this one 8 out of 10 forbidden sugar cookies. Oh, you're a little lower than me. I'm a little lower because I feel like um, this episode does keep the ball rolling. It ends on a cliffhanger. Mm-hmm. Um, we're learning some things. It really does move the story along, but it's just so damn sad. 
you know. Yeah. See, I approach it from like the I just I love the writing in this oh, episode. Right? Fantastic, love, just, yeah. And and so yeah, it's, it's that's what makes it a home run mm-hmm. for me almost. Yeah. So yeah. All right. Um now we did get some Twitter feedback. Yes, we did. This past couple of we weeks. Did. Uh, so I thought we'd mention that. Uh, we got it from uh, Sebastian, a.k.a. at Cone of Dungeon. Which I think is fantastic, by the way. Which is a, yeah, Parks of Rec Parks reference, of Rec. if you're not familiar. Oh, so funny. So well, well played, Sebastian. Yep. And uh, so, yeah, on, on August 4th of 2018, he uh, tweeted us, and he said, your podcast is hilarious as f and if, i'm censoring this here because for rob southgate's years otherwise that's true in full but sebastian uh, writes it out like yeah, a big so, boy but we have to we have to do the kids bot version exactly over here. We, have to, we have to we have to censor it because yeah because the the children so um so now we have the ultimate po- like pull quote for ghostwood mm-hmm. hilarious as f hilarious af exactly so thank so, you very much uh, for that tone, thank you, tone of thank dunshire you, yes <laughs> Exactly. But uh, he goes on to say, you and Charles, I mean, he's, he's referring to you, of course, Dan. Here he says, you and at Charles Skaggs make a great duo. I think, Thank, so. I think so, too. Thank you very much. Yeah. I, um, yeah, I posted and, a photo and, yeah. of a new cat, cat that I recently got. We uh, had a stray coming around the house, and now she came in the house. So um, I posted a photo of the cat washing her face, because I think, I think face washing time is adorable. When cats right. do it, and uh, Sebastian commented because I took the picture in my Pez room, and so he finally got to see the Pez room. Right. And uh, then, um, so I started talking back to him about how I loved his username. <laughs> <laughs> so then we started talking, talking yeah. about the podcast, which is great. So, yep, yeah. He goes on. Um, I guess he's talking about our previous episode mm-hmm. where he says the Leo Johnson gum joke had me dying. I think you guys know which one I'm talking about. At Udenax19, so inappropriate, <laughs> but so ridiculous and funny. You one brand of gum from this from now. <laughs> <laughs> so I of course. And that'll stem from me pointing out that Bobby spat his gum on their kitchen floor. Mm-hmm. And then Zan just took it to a new level. And so I, of course, responded to Sebastian with, This is where we live, Sebastian. <laughs> so, yes. Thank you very much for kind so, comments, Sebastian. And I'm glad you uh, yeah, we enjoyed were, the Pez yeah. room. Cl- and thank you for uh, calling us hilarious. Yeah, staff. that's that's um, great. I love that. Hopefully, everybody else thinks we're hilarious. Oh my God, Charles! Now we have to live up to that. We got to really bring in our age. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> so much pressure. So much pressure. <sighs> I think we can do it, though. As if you weren't stressed out enough, no. right? Yes, yeah, seriously. <laughs> <Good Lord. laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, hopefully everybody else thinks uh, is enjoying us as well. So uh, thank you again, Sebastian. We really appreciate it. So uh, if you'd like to be like Sebastian, be one of the cool kids. Yeah, you can reach uh, Ghostwood at Ghostwood Cast on the Twitter machine, just like Sebastian did, or you can email us at the, at the Gmail. Gmail. The Gmail, Ghostwood Podcast at gmail.com. The Gmail, the Gmail, oh, oh, the Gmail. The Gmail, the Gmail. <laughs> and, uh, or you can reach us on Facebook at Ghostwood the Twin Peaks Podcast. Gotten a few likes on that recently. Thank you, everybody. So, uh, th- thank you, everybody who's liked us on Facebook. Everybody who hasn't yet, uh, please consider doing so. We'd appreciate it. We'd love to. Also, follow us on We'd Twitter. We'd love to live up to thumbs up. Exactly. So, yeah, we would love to pollute your feeds with our nonsense. Mm-hmm. And and so. I do curate the shit posting. I only do the good ones. And and, and you and you do it really well <laughs> because you're very select. You're selective. I am very. I've seen- it's like you don't just you don't you don't just post anything that comes down the pike. You post the really if good. If it's posting. funny, yeah. If it, it's funny, I'll, I'll I'll do it. So. Yeah. So uh, yeah, kudos for your quality control. Thank you. Yes, it's it's, it's it's shit post curation is what I like to think of it. <laughs> QAQC Ooh, nice. on that. You're welcome. Uh, so uh, yeah, or and also uh, if you'd like to go to Apple iTunes and rate us there, uh, let us know what you think of the show. Hopefully, you enjoy it and uh, raise there because that helps people find us mm-hmm. and also yeah please please subscribe to us as well we'd love even that. if you delete us the second we come down just subscribe to us anyway 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't need to download us to your phone. We just you, we can be in the cloud. Just subscribe to us. Right. Yep. That's all I ask. Do us a solid. Yeah. Do us a solid. We don't. We don't ask that. No, we much, don't. I don't think. Right. Okay. And uh, as for me, you can reach me at Charles Skaggs on the interwebs or on the Twitter machine uh, at Charles Skaggs on the Instagram, Google Plus for all you crazy kids on the Google Plus, Facebook, of course, Charles Skaggs in Hilliard, Ohio. Or my blog of geeky things. Damn good coffee and hot. Good work, Candy. Damn good coffee and hot. Where I talk about Ghostwood and Twin Peaks and all kinds of comic book sci-fi news. And all kinds of geeky stuff. And uh, talk about my other podcasts I do for Southgate Media. Including Next Stop Everywhere, the award-winning Next Stop Everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast they do with Jesse Jackson. Titan Talk, the Titans podcast that I also do with Jesse, where we talk about the upcoming DC Universe series, Titans, and the Phantom Zone podcast that I do with Karen Lindsay, friend of the show, where we uh, talk about all the comic book shows that currently air and do our weekly reviews. Which you can't so possibly do every week because there's so many of them. Yeah, there was, we, we were doing like eight. Seriously, a week, and we we had to dial that back because, well, for one thing, the podcasts were like three hours long, and we just like, okay, we have to cut this down mm-hmm. before because it's just way too right. much. So we're trying to figure like the, our four favorite ones we really want to talk about. So right now we're talking about Cloak and Dagger just ended, so we're talking about Preacher, Luke Cage, and uh, Winona Earp on Sci Fi. Oh, okay. At the moment, at the moment. So, if you're into those shows at the moment, uh, give us a listen. Otherwise, the fall TV season will be coming soon, and Lord Almighty, there will be tons of shows. Oh my there. goodness, yes. Well, and if you're sitting around wondering, like, well, where are the geeks at? I got a yeah. couple of options for you. First of all, there's always a Southgate Media Patreon. Come check right. us out, see what you got going on. Then there's also a Facebook group, geeking out. Do you want to know what's up? In you know, in, you know, geek current events, geek, geek activities yeah. around uh, Central, Ohio. Uh, Central Ohio. Come on over to yeah. geeking out. Come on over to geeking out. We'll, we'll keep you updated. We'll updated. Yeah, and Zan, where can they find you on the interwebs? I am on the Twitters and the Instagrams as Udinax19, right. and the Facebook just as Zan Sprouse, and I can be reached at the uh, Ghostwood page. Yes. I'm not in nearly as many so, places as you are, Charles. I just have the one podcast. Well, you know, you you do less, more with less. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I have to, I have to like overcompensate because you know, just just to make up for being me. So you know, <laughs> just to just to kind of keep up. So oh, I have to, goodness. I have to work twice as hard being. Well, me. at least you're not naked in an FBI agent's bed. You're not trying that hard. I don't think anybody wants to see that. <laughs> Depends on the FBI agent. That's the thing. <laughs> this is so. true. Special agent Chet does. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to see that? <laughs> Bring that on. Honestly, yeah, there's impressive. really not anybody in that FBI that I would not mind coming in my room if I was naked in the bed. Right. Seriously. Mm. Kyle McLaughlin, Chris Isaac. Uh, Albert Rosenthal. Del Ferrer. Del Ferrer. <laughs> <David Bowie. laughs> you know, and, and there's even 12 year old. Well, well, maybe Gordon Cole. I take it. You t- you'd I, hit I that? It. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, you would just be like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> Either that or it would be like really normal. And you'd be like, you would not believe the normal sex I just had with David Lee. <laughs> you would not believe it. And then they yes, and there's and there's still twelve year old me, who was cutting right. cutting stand by me pictures out of Tiger Beat that, that would right. that would would, uh, would 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 take the key for someone. It's a good looking FBI, well, uh, and I don't even care if David Duchovny's yeah. in a dress. It's David Duchovny. <laughs> you, still put, you could get him out of it. You could get him out of the dress. Take the time. Yeah. So yeah, there you go. Even Denise, look- even Denise Bryson gets some Seriously, love. Seriously, this is a good, good looking. <laughs> However, I do not think I think I'm way, way, way out of Laura Dern's league, though. So, right. You know. I've seen, I think I, I've seen much. Jeff Goldblum. You know, I'm out of her league. Yeah. Of her league. And, you know, she, she kicked Kyle McLaughlin to the curb. So. Well, doesn't she kind of kick everybody to the curb eventually? 
I would think. Wasn't she going to get married to Jeff Goldblum, but then she did a movie with uh, Bill Bob Thornton and he came home and his girlfriend was gone? <laughs> like, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah I wasn't they, aware they that. broke up because of Billy Bob. Mm. The story I heard, but that was through E! Yeah. So, you know, I can't, you know, it's not like either one of them told me. Should we, should we do like the Entertainment Tonight theme? da 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 so this podcast is for is for Twin Peaks and thirty to forty year old songs, and, right? And trash and trashy entertainment gossip from from twenty five years ago. <laughs> yes, yes. Obscure, like obscure internet or entertainment. Yeah, if you want to know that people, everybody's forgotten. If you want to know what Kyle McLaughlin's Red Book article said? I'm your gal. <laughs> God. <laughs> what part of Hey, not, not many people can claim that. my bum so. did I pull that piece of trivia out of? My God. <laughs> Jeez Louise. That's okay. Oh, crazy. <laughs> See, you didn't know. It was, it's a podcast, and it's also therapy. It's a podcast, and it's therapy. Thank you, Dr. Jacoby. <laughs> In your Hawaiian office. So adorable. <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> All right. So. All right. So with that, uh, next time on Ghostwood, in case you're wondering, yes, there is a next time. We're going to talk about realization time. Episode six, the seventh episode. Exactly. So uh, getting close to the season one finale. This is the penultimate season one episode Mm -hmm. for all of those of you who love the word penultimate. And uh, yeah, so we're getting things ramping up. And uh, Audrey's going to get a little closer as she infiltrates to One-Eyed Jacks. A little too close. A little too close. A little too close. Yeah, this next episode is kind of where everything hits the fan, isn't it? Everything comes to a head. Pretty much. Pretty Not just much. in Twin Peaks, but also on Invitation to Love. This yeah. is true. This yeah. is true. So. Hopefully, uh, hopefully Chet's feeling a little better. From getting knocked out by. He got, yeah. yeah, he getting like, lights out, oh, Chet. Oh, goodness. Jeez. Right. Lights out, Mr. Monkey Wrench. <laughs> All right. So, everybody, uh, come on back for episode 40 of Ghostwood as we talk about realization time. It's going to be fun. It will be fun. It will be fun. And obviously, we have a high standard thanks to Sebastian. Yes, we do. We do. We have, to be, we have to be hilarious AF. That's on you, Sebastian. That's, so, but you know. he's, he's, he's our, you know, he, you know, he's our applause meter yeah. for us. Exactly. So, we got so. to. Hopefully we will. Hopefully we'll be hilarious as f I next week so. or next time. I hope. So. All right. So everybody, thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time, right here on Ghostwood the Twin Peaks podcast. Bye, everybody.